Hello, and welcome to the first episode of my Ultra Messaging podcast. I'm David Johnston. In these recordings, I hope to cover everything from common UMS source config options to helping you to avoid building unmaintainable and unscalable enterprise messaging infrastructures. I'll be writing lots of sample code, and one of my goals is to build up a repository of code showing how the different features and options UMS work and interact with each other, and eventually move on to all of the UM suite and that allow you so much flexibility and power when writing apps that need to communicate with each other. Today I'm going to go for a very easy first step by writing a heavily cut down version of the most famous of our ultra messaging sample apps, LBM Source and LBM Receiver. I want to show the minimum code necessary to make use of the LBM messaging layer and to get applications talking to each other. I'll start by writing a source application. I'm going to start by creating a context, a topic, and a source. So we can see here, I've created an LBM context, CTX, object. I've then allocated the topic called test to that context. And then I've created a source for that topic. In all of these um, creations, actually, we'll throw the LBM exception. So in this case, I've just thrown it for the method, or in this case the constructor, and then I've caught it up here to make life a little bit simpler and to make my code look uh, easier to read. The next stage then is to, in this case, allocate some memory to create my message using a byte buffer. In this case I've just uh, signed a blank message of 50 bytes, and then call the send method. There are lots and lots of different uh, parameters I can pass into the send method. In this case, I've just given it my byte buffer, told it where to start in that buffer and the length, and in this case set to use a non-blocking source. So I don't have to worry about keep retrying. I've also just put a simple message down here, message sent. Okay, so I'm just then going to tidy up making sure that I close my source before I close my context. And that's it. So here we've created a very, very simple source. I'm gonna send a single message of 50 bytes on the topic test on the source I've just created for my, my context. Okay, so let's see how the receiver is going to look like. And the first stage, everything looks very similar. I'm gonna create a context. Again, I'm going to create a topic on that context. In this case, it's going to be a topic which I'm going to be interested in. I'm going to create a receiver for that topic, test. But note there is a difference here when I'm creating my receiver that the most common way of getting messages back on a receiver is to create a callback. So we implement a, a, a class which is going to tell us what to do when, we, uh, when the OS passes us back a message. Okay, so here I've just finished off the, the receiver before I work on the callback. Um, I've just set up a little bit of a, a, a catch here. I'm going to continue looping. I don't want to close my application thread. Otherwise, that's obviously going to shut down my receiver completely. So I'm just going to allow it to loop. And I could put a sleep in here if I wanted to, which would make it a lot more efficient. And then I'm just going to close down my receiver and close down my context. In this case, of course, I'm never actually going to jump and close this down but we don't need to worry about it for this sim simple application. Okay, so let me just go ahead and quickly implement then the receiver callback class. The most important thing we need to remember to do is to implement the LBM receiver callback interface. And that then tells us the method, which the function which we need to implement on receive, which is the code that's going to get called in the callback every time we receive a message. So what type of messages might we have? So for now, I'm going to cover the three key message types. If we receive a data message, if we receive a BOS, so a beginning of session, and if we receive an EOS, or an end of session. should also add in here, actually, the, the default. And that way we can handle anything else that crops up. OK. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and implement a very simple, um, some very simple messages for each of these. When I receive some message data, I'm going to print out the topic name, 
the source and the length of the message itself. For the BOS and EOS, I'm just going to print out again the topic name and the source and just beginning of transport session or end of transport session so I can see exactly what's happening. And I'll just look at the default and print out the message type to see what it is that we're not processing correctly. So that's my callback here, my receiver callback, it's all very straightforward. And here's my actual receiver sample code. So again, very, very simple, nothing difficult here. So let's try and see if we can actually see them running and see what happens. So I'm just going to save both of these. So I've just copied across all of the files onto one of our lab test machines. And we can see now I've got two simple commands to run. I can run the UM receiver sample application and I can run the UM source sample application. So let's start the receiver and then let's start the source and see what happens. And we can see the message has been sent on the source side and then the application terminates. And on the receiver side we see you know, something slightly unexpected. We don't see a beginning of session, we don't see any messages having been sent. However, what we do see is an end of transport session message. So what could be causing this? Typically, we're losing um, messages because we haven't had time to set up the transport correctly. Let's see what happens if I add in a sleep. So let's go back to my source code. And after my create here, I'm just going to add in some a sleep. OK, so we see here, after we've created the source, we're then going to sleep for five seconds and see if this gives us time to plumb in our transport session. So I'll just transfer this file across again and recompile. So let us see what happens then. If again I rerun my receiver. And now I execute my source again. So this time I've got my sleep in after I create my source. And then I see my message sent message. Let's see if this makes any difference on the receiver side. Ah, OK. So that's good. So that's better. We're now seeing our beginning of transport session. And we're now seeing our end of transport session. But we're still not getting that missed message. That single message that's being sent is not registering here. Let's see what happens if I actually just send a few more than, than that single message. And let's see what gets delivered in that case. Let's go back to the source sample app again. And whereas before we're only causing, calling send once, let's just put this inside a simple yeah, loop. So now we're just going to send 10 messages. And in fact, what we can do is also include the number. So that we've got a little bit of indication of, of supposedly which of these messages is actually getting through. OK, so let's run again now. So we've got a receiver. And we start our source. Now, we've, remember, we've still got our five-second sleep in before we start sending. And then we send 10 messages. OK, they all ripple through. The application quits. And on our receiver side, it doesn't appear that we're receiving any of the messages. Let's see what happens then. If we add in the sleep before we actually close the source. So at the moment, we send all of the messages and then we immediately close. So we're giving no chance for any kind of recovery mechanism.
standard retransmission recovery um, delay before we declare messages as being um, unrecoverable tends to be 10 seconds in fact let's wait let's wait 15 seconds and see what happens in this case so let's see what happens now so I've now got a sleep before I send the 10 messages and I've also got a sleep afterwards so I'll start my receiver and I'll start my source So we see all of our messages sent. If I now move to my receiver, I now see my beginning of the transport session. If I look, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten messages. So all of my messages have now come through, and then I receive my end of transport. So now we can see that I've eliminated. It's not so much a case of head loss in this case. I remove head loss by adding in a delay before I start sending, or I can choose to configure late join, which you can look at a different point. But I've also got to make sure I give time for my messages to get through before I close my source down. That's kind of a key point here. But I have successfully proved at least that, if I change back to my source, my sample source, with a very small amount of code for both my source and my receiver, I'm able to successfully communicate and send messages. That's the main purpose that I wanted to achieve in this in this podcast. It's just to start, set up some basic source and receiver, and now to be able to move on from here. And that's kind of a decision I'll be making over the next few weeks when I create more ca- podcasts. I'll be looking at some of the messaging fundamentals. So diving a bit deeper into what gets created when we create a context, what actually gets created in the underlying OS when we create a source and a receiver. Then we'll start looking at some of the common configuration options that we can use to change things. For example, you know, choosing between sequential and embedded mode. And then we'll start to add in additional UM features. We'll look at late join, we'll look at request response, etc., etc. Please feel free to make comments. Um, any any advice any recommendations for what you would like to see going through then please please get in touch otherwise thanks very much for listening goodbye